Good morning. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the topics we were looking at in the lecture last week as regards to alert controllers. As we've seen, the key to getting things happening in iOS and Xcode, as we've been saying since the first class, is to understand the document object model of iOS and to understand how to use the API. So let's do that. So I've sent the material for this code out in zip files as well. So the concept here is we're going to be setting up an app which can take some user information and process it. We're going to save it back to the label. So have the view controller open in your panel. And there's the checklist, right? So follow the checklist. So we're going to create some IBO outlets to get started and following along with this would be super good if you can. So we're going to make an action for the reset password. Give it some suitably meaningful name so you'll remember it. And then as always, let's dump out some print messages so we can trace in the debug console and see where we are. We're also going to make an outlet for the label here. So let's grab the data from the alert box and dump it back to the label. So you know what to do. I don't have to talk you through making an outlet for the label. So one is the action here and one is the variable. We talked about having multiple outlets for each UI widget. So let's get into our view controller. So now we're going to enter the code for filling in an alert box or showing an alert box. So let's create a box to hold our results. So you know the parameters, right? And we use autocomplete here to help us out. And we talked about this in lecture. You can look at your lecture presentation from last week or Apple's documentation. So we prompt the user and we're going to use the alert style. And remember, we talked about the three kinds of styles preceded by the dot. So now let's complete these steps. And self.present, I talked about how that actually gets stuff to show up on the screen. Type along with me now. So let's add an action to our UI alert controller variable, which is the box. And we're using the UI alert action. We're providing a title. Let's use default in this case. And handler is nil because we don't want to do anything at this time. Now we have our other option, our other action, which is cancel. What style is that going to use? So we want our positive action to be on the right hand side, which is a good design pattern. And cancel on the left. Let's give it a spin, make sure it's all going good. How do we add a text box? So 
So let's go to the box variable. Add text field is the function here. Bracket UI text field returning void. So here we know in Swift that's a function returning a value, which is void in this case. So text box in is a thing that has to be there in your Swift code. It's just a fact of how the API is written. Where are we going to place our text box? So here's their prompt telling them to enter their username. This will add a single text box to the alert box. And then the user types their information in there. So pressing reset password is now displaying the text box to enter the password. Because the click handlers are set to null, the box will disappear. There's your first text box. So adding multiple text fields is just like adding multiple buttons. Now I'm going to end up with two text boxes and I'll prompt them for their password. And in the case of a password, we hide what they're entering in. So we're going to use the is secure text entry style. So we won't be able to see what they wrote in. Let's hit play and see what happens. So it appears to be working pretty good so far. We haven't hooked up cancel or save yet, so let's go and do that now. So now let's tie dumping out this data to just close the loop on our code. Follow along with me now in your coding, please. We already have our reset password label. Inside our save, go to the handler, and let's put in the code for our button handler function right there at line 94 for me. I replaced the erase nil and replaced it with an open curly, bla uh, curly bracket. Now I'm going to type in the mandatory code, action in, and I'm going to type in my function code under this line. In my function code, step one, get the username and password from the text boxes. Then I'm going to display it in the label. You know how to do this. Label.text property equals the name of the variable or a message at this point.
and I have to put self because I'm accessing a label inside the view function. If you want to access variables outside the pop-up box, you have to use the self reference similar to this in Java. Let's check that it works. Yay, we're doing good so far. So there we see it says password changed. Now let's go and get the username and password from the text boxes. So our UI alert controller data is stored in a variable called box. So there we're applying our methods such as add text field. So UI alert controller has properties in addition to methods. One of the properties it has is text fields. They're of type UI text field, and it's an option array. It's an array because you can have more than one text box. It's optional because they may not provide any data. Optional means something that is null or not guaranteed to be there. If you don't make it optional, you'll get a compile error. That's why it's an array, and that's why the array is optional. We can access individual text fields by array number. So box text field 0 is going to represent the first text box we have on the screen or box text fields one is going to refer to the second and we can access them as needed. So let username equals box dot text fields zero position dot text property. it's going to return an object of type UI text field. So box dot text field. Let's put a message using our dereferencing notation backslash and the variable in round brackets. Before you run the code, you get the pink optionals message. The array is optional, so it's possible at some point it could be nil. So you have to force unwrap it as we've been seeing since week three or week four now with the exclamation mark. That's why we use the forced unwrapping with the exclamation mark. And let's force unwrap the text box as well. That's why we're putting two exclamation marks. We could also use if let or guard let, depending on what you're trying to do. For now, we're going to assume it'll never be nil and just force unwrap it. The if or guard would guard against the case where it could be nil. There, the password is changed.
let's do one more example of trying to get the password. Constant called password, box dot text field array second position, and we're unwrapping the text field value. And here we're using our dereferencing notation again to access the value of the password. And we may want to rechange the label to make it bigger to display all the data. That wraps up how to add a text box to an alert controller. Follow the steps, people. Make the box, add the button, add text field, method applied to the box variable. You can provide a hint. You can make it is secure to hide the entry of the data. You can specify the alignment. And as always, we use styles prefixed with the period. Left, right, or center. You know how graphic design works. Those are all properties you can work with. Finally, self.present. After you show the alert to the user, you're now going to come back and process the information you've acquired.